everybody. Welcome back. Good afternoon. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier live in Detroit, Michigan. We are at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2022, North America. John, this is, this is nearing the end of our second day of coverage, and one of the things that has been breaking all day on this show is news. news. We have more news to break yeah, next. This next segment is a, a company we've been following. They've got some news we're going to get into. Managing Kubernetes life cycle has been a huge challenge when you got large organizations, whether you're spinning up and scaling. Scale is the big story. Kubernetes is at the center of the conversation. This next, seg next segment's going to be great. It is. We've got two guests from Spectra Cloud here. Please welcome its CEO, Chen Rui Fu, and co-founder. And its CTO and co-founder, Stad Malik. Guys, great to have you on the program. Thank you for having My us. My pleasure. Yeah. So, Tenry, what's going on? What's the big news? Yeah, so we just uh, announced our Palace Rio this morning. Uh, so we add a bunch of a new functionality. Uh, so first of all, we have a nested cluster. So enable enterprise uh, to easily provide Kubernetes service even on top of their existing clusters. And secondly, we also support seamless migration for their existing cluster. We enable them to be able to migrate their cluster into our CNCF for upstream Kubernetes distro called Palette Extended Kubernetes, PXK, without any downtime. And lastly, uh, we also add a lot of focus on developer experience. Uh, those uh, uh, additional capability enable developer to easily onboard and, and deploy the application for dev tests and troubleshooting without they have to have a steep Kubernetes learning curve. So big breaking news this morning, Palette 3.0, so you got, the, you got the product. This is a big theme here, developer productivity, ease of use, is the top story here as developers are going to increase their code velocity because they're under a lot of pressure. This infrastructure is getting smarter. This is a big part of managing it. So the toil is now moving to the ops teams, they're now dev teams, security. You got to enable faster deployment of apps and code. This is what you guys saw while you get this right. That, take us through that specific value proposition. What's the, what are the key things on, uh, in this news release? Yeah, exactly right, right, so we basically provide our solution to platform engineering team so that they can use our platform to enable Kubernetes service uh, to serve their developers and application team. And then in the meantime, the developers will be able to easily uh, use Kubernetes or without they have to learn a lot of what Kubernetes specific things. Right? So maybe you can get into some you know, And actually, yeah. so the detail about it is there's a big separation between what operations team does and the development team that are using the actual capability. The development teams don't necessarily need to know the internals of Kubernetes. There's so much complexity when it comes into it. How do I do things like deployment, and pause, manifest, just too much. So what our platform does, it makes it really simple for them to say, I have a containerized application, I want to be able to model it, it's a really simple profile, and from there, being able to say, I have a database service I want to attach to it, I have a specific service, go run it. Behind the scenes, does it run inside of a nested cluster, which we'll talk in a little bit, does it run in the host cluster, those are happening transparently for the developer. You know what I love about this, what you guys are doing in the news, it really points out what I love about DevOps, because cloud, let's face it, cloud early adopters were all the hardcore cloud folks. As it goes mainstream with Kubernetes, you start to see like words like platform engineering. I mean, I love that term. That means there's a platform, it's been around for a while for people who are building their own stuff. That means it's going to scale and enable people to enable value, build on top of it, yep. move faster. This platform engineering is becoming now a standard in enterprises. It wasn't like that before. What's your reaction? Is that, how do you see that evolving faster, or do you believe that, or what's your take on it? Yeah, so I think it's starting from the DevOps team, right, that every application team, they all try to deploy and manage their application and their own Kubernetes infrastructure. But very soon, all these, each application team, they start realize mm -hmm. they have to repeatedly do the same thing. Uh, so these uh, will need to, uh, have a platform engineering team to basically bring some of the common practice to that. And some people call them SREs, uh, like, but that's really platform engineering. It is, it is. I mean, yeah. think about like SREs, about abil ability to deploy your applications at scale and monitoring and observability. I think what platform engineering does is codify all those best practices. Everything when it comes about how do you monitor the actual applications, how do you do your CI, CD, your backups, instead of now having every single individual development team figuring out how to do it themselves, platform engineers saying, why don't we actually build policies that we can provide as a service to different development teams so that they can operate their own applications at scale. So launching Pellet 3.0 today, you also had a launch in September, so just a few weeks ago, 
Talk about what these two announcements mean from Spectre Cloud's perspective in terms of proof points, what you're delivering to the end users and the value that they're getting from it. Yeah, so our goal is really to help enterprise to deploy and run Kubernetes anywhere, right? Whether it's in cloud data center or even at edge locations. So in September, we also announced our Edge V2 capabilities, which enable very easy deployment uh, of uh, Edge Kubernetes right, at, at, at any, any location, like a retail stores, restaurant, and so on and so forth. So as you know, at Edge location, there's no cloud endpoint there. It's not easy to directly deploy and manage Kubernetes. And also at Edge location, there's not, it's not as secure as, uh, as cloud or data center environment. So how to make the end-to-end -end system more secure, right? That is tamper-proof. That is also very, very important. Right, great, great take there. Thanks for explaining that. I got to ask, because I'm curious, what's the secret sauce? Is it nested clusters? What's, what's the core under the hood here on 3.0 that people should know about? It's news, it's hot. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the most to be, important? To be honest, it's about enabling developer velocity. Now, how do you enable developer velocity? It's going to be able for them to think about deploying applications without worrying about Kubernetes, being able to build these application profiles. This nested cluster that we're talking about enables them to get access to a complete cluster within seconds. They're essentially having access to be able to add any operations, any capabilities, without having the ability to provision a cluster on inside of infrastructure, whether it's Amazon, Google, or on-prem. So. And you have the dev engine too, right? That, that, that's a self-service provisioning and for environments, is that? Yeah, so the dev engine itself are the capabilities that we offer to developers so that they can build these application profiles. What the application profiles, again, they define aspects about my application is going to be a container, it's going to be a database service, it's going to be a Helm chart. They define that entire structure inside of it. From there, they can choose to say, I want to deploy this. The target environment, whether it becomes an actual host cluster or a nested cluster itself, is irrelevant to them. For them, it's completely transparent. So transparency enabling developer velocity, what's been some of the feedback so far? Yeah. Oh, all developers love that. Uh, and also, <laughs> same for all the ops team. If it's easy and goes faster and yeah, reduces exactly. the steps. Because the ops team, yeah, ops team, they need a consistency, they need a governance, they need a visibility, but in the meantime, developer, they need a flexibility, they need ease of use without a, a steep learning curve. So this is really a win-win So, so I hear a lot of people say, I got a lot of sprawl, cluster sprawl. Yeah. Gets get out of hand. Does that solve that? How do you guys solve that problem? Yeah, so the nested cluster is a perfect answer for that. Uh, so before using nested cluster, for a lot of enterprise to serving developers, they have to either create a very large Kubernetes cluster and then isolate it by namespace, uh, which not ideal for a lot of situation because namespace, namespace is not uh, yeah. a hard isolation. Uh, and also a lot of global resource like CRD and operator does not work in namespace. But the other way is you give each developer a separate, a separate Kubernetes cluster. But that very quickly becomes too costly because not every developer is working 24-7. <laughs> you know, half of the time your, your cluster is, uh, is a sit there idle and that costs a lot of money. So using nested cluster, you will be able to basically do all right. these inside the, your hosted cluster, bring the efficiency there. That is huge. Yeah. Saves a lot of time, reduces the steps it takes. So I'll take, take a, a minute, my last question to use, to explain what's in it for the developer. If they work with Spectre Cloud, what is your value, probably, what's the pitch? Not the sales pitch, but like, what's the value yeah, pitch that you give them? Yeah, and the value for us is, again, develop, there are a number of different services and teams people are using today are so many. There are so many different languages, there are so many different libraries, there's so many different capabilities. It's too hard for developers to have to understand not only the in internal development tools, but also the Kubernetes, the, the containers, the technologies. It's too much for it. Our value prop is making it really easy for them to get access to all these different integrations and tooling without having to learn it. Right? And then being able to very easily say, I want to deploy this into a cluster, again, whether it's a nested cluster or a host cluster, but the next layer on top of that is how do we also share those abilities with other teams? If I build my application profile, I'm developing an application, I should be able to share with my team members, with Tenry, saying, hey Tenry, why don't you also take a look at my app profile and let's build and collaborate together on that. So it's about collaboration and be able to move yeah. really fast. Exactly. I mean, more developers got to be more productive. That's number one, number one hit here. Great job. Exactly. Yeah. Last question before we run out of time. Is this GA now? Can folks get their hands on it? Where? Yes, yeah, it is GA. Uh, and uh, available both uh, as, as a SaaS and also the on-prem install. 
Awesome, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Congratulations on the announcement and the momentum that Spectre Cloud is powering itself with. We appreciate your insights and your time. Awesome. Thank, you so Thank you so much. Our All pleasure. Right. Thank you for having us. For our guests and John Furrier, Lisa Martin here live in Michigan at KubeCon Cloud Native Con 22. Our next guests join us in just a minute, so stick around. <laughs>